Good morning, everyone. Dex here from A2K. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Working Between Robots and Inventor. We will have technical consultant Ben Burns presenting for us. So we just go through about A2K ourselves, all about fostering innovation through consulting and training. A2K Technologies plays a vital role in helping the infrastructure, building, mining, construction, architecture, and manufacturing industries reach their full potential by delivering complete technology solutions and support services such as education, consulting, and IT managed services. We're working with visionaries to shape the future of design and in turn enable them to innovation to minimize risks, improve productivity, and achieve excellence. ATK Technologies is considered the best primary of choice and trusted advisor by vendors and clients. We partner with major software and hardware vendors to meet clients' technology needs. We strive to exceed client expectations by understanding the challenges and delivering solutions to experience and innovation. We work with clients and companies of NSI nationally and abroad. Over to you, Ben. Yep. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, just a bit of a quick introduction about me. I'm Ben Burns. I'm the Structural Technical Lead at A2K Technologies. Uh, we work a lot with business workflow transformation and software implementation. Uh, personally, I have over 25 plus years experience in the structural and consulting engineering field, uh, working with industrial companies, uh, commercial and infrastructure, high density residential. So I've done up to sort of 50 story towers, including the new circular key tower that's currently being built in Sydney. Uh, I've also worked with the Metro Martin Place. So I was responsible for the North Tower there. Uh, doing a lot of design and construction documentation. I've been using Revit since 2010. Uh, I have a structural engineering associate diploma and I speak in the industry and I'm a big believer in automation. So um, I think when you look through your workflows, it's always a good idea. If there's something you're doing multiple times a day, you need to try and learn how to automate that process. And that way it will save you time lift your productivity and as well once once you do get your basically I call them robots almost working for you in that automation you're sort of taking that away from that human error element so you can monitor what's coming through but you can have faith that the code will work properly yep so into today's webinar uh, we've just got a bit of a rough agenda here we're going to um, go through these points and at the end we should have a good understanding of the interaction between Inventor and Revit. So we're going to touch on just some workflows and just the common way you may transfer all that information. Uh, we're going to spend basically like the first half, maybe 15 minutes going through an Inventor to Revit workflows and then we're going to go through Revit and Inventor. The first half, uh, Revit Inventor to Revit, I will show as mainly a PowerPoint presentation with slides. Revit to Inventor, I will actually open up Revit and Inventor and show how that goes. Uh, we'll also have a bit of a conclusion. We'll leave time at the end for a bit of Q&A. So please feel free to use the chat and the Q&A function in Zoom to put any questions through that you wish to. And I will address them at the end. Um, I will also give you an opportunity if you do want to speak and ask a question. Uh, use the raise your hand in function in Zoom and I will give you some notice and then I will let you, um, I'll unmute you so that you can ask any questions through that as well. So we're firstly looking at just normal workflows. So Inventor and Revit, they work very differently. Um, it's the way I've sort of shown the cogs there in a way is how Inventor and Revit works. So Inventor is where you really get into the nitty gritty of more your manufacturing elements, your robots, your frames, um, and very small items, very small specific items, where Revit is more of a project consulting software. So you use that more to set out the whole project and to set out the basic scope. And you may take that then just basically almost the room that you have available, push that through to Inventor almost as your, like your objects envelope. And then you will create your details in that. Uh, they do mesh together quite well. 
and being both Autodesk products, they um, work very nicely together. And it's a matter of trying to harness that interoperability. So we have a classic workflow here. So we're going from inventor and we're sort of looking at doing that. We're looking at actually creating our robots, um, small elements, even like computers, stuff like that, um, capacitor chips, et cetera. Uh, conveyor belts, small structures. I would do larger structures in Revit itself. Um, small sort of factory items as well and plant materials. So um, like small cogs, um, small interactions between um, products in that inventor. I did have someone saying, uh, why wouldn't you just use Inventor to do like an awning or something? And I would do an, an awning in Inventor in, in Revit. But if I needed to do the machinery that was actually going to tilt those um, awnings, that's where Inventor comes into it. So you generally go from the smaller items in Inventor, push them through into Revit, which is your multidisciplinary items and where you can author those BIM elements. We could then push that into Navisworks for coordination and review quantities, etc. So in Inventor, we can push that out to a frame generator and push the frame generator back into Inventor. We can also push those into robot structure analysis. So robot is a structural analysis software by Autodesk and it is quite effective. So we can push that structural analysis again back into Inventor tweak our design, see if there's any stresses through our structural analysis, and then change our inventor product accordingly. We can push the structure from robot again, straight into inventor, and we have that through there, and that will come into Revit. Revit, we can also push out to advanced steel to do um, shop drawings, quantities and uh, more sort of plate designs. It's um, steelwork design, obviously. So with Revit, that's where we're doing our multiple disciplines. So we'll have in there our MEP, civil items. That's where we can bring everything in together to work in one model. And we'll then push out to the inventor, our smaller elements, our conveyor belts, robots, plant items, etc. So in the inventor to Revit workflow, we're looking at three basic inventor elements. So we've got our part elements, we've got our assemblies, and we also have our frames. So I'm going to look at those three items through here. We've got here a typical inventor assembly. This is our test station here. So it's always a good idea to break these elements down. You can see at the top here, I have shrink wrapped this. So it's quite important to look at that shrink wrapping. When you simplify or convert an object, you really need to think of a couple of things. You need to think what your personal preference is, how you want to work with that particular object. You also need to consider what are the project requirements and most importantly, what is the end goal? What do you actually want to document and what do you want to have shown as your final product? Never lose sight of your final product. Maybe just a pump symbol will do, or do you actually need to have it rendered from a close proximity? So the decisions you make, you have to do those when you're performing the converting process and get that information out. An STP file does not contain much inventor intelligence. So basically it's a bunch of solids and faces. If you want parts in inventor to be parametrically aligned, like with Revit, you do need to remodel a lot or all of the parts through inventor and Revit itself as well. You can get it when it's in the family, then you can add a lot of those parameter values. SAT files as well stand for standard axis text and they're stored in like an ASCII format. And they can come through quite all right as well, but they will have just the surfaces. 
So once you've completed this simplifying and remodeling process, so with this one here, I have saved it out as a, I, I've shrink wrapped it and it's still an Inventor IPT file format. So to get it parametric, we then have to shrink wrap it and export that through the authoring elements. So we can see in here, we've got our standard Inventor data interface where we can do our shape extrusions, etc. We have all that functionality in Inventor. So I can save this. When I save this, I can save it as a DWG file. I can save it as an IGS file. And I can save as a SAT or a STEP file through here as well. I'm just going to look at a simple pipe corner here. So with this, we can export this simply as a SAT file, which is a standard access text file. Now what we're doing is we're actually going through the BIM content tab here in Inventor. So in this content, I can get the part, this IPT file, and I can add some Revit connections to it. So these connections here, our cable tray connector, conduit connector, duct connector, pipe connector, and our electrical connector. They're all our MEP connections, which we can use in Revit to then put this into our um, workflows through that. So we can have like a full MEP system and have all these pipe connections and we can place these accordingly. So we can have a pipe connection at the end here. We can put it in, we can put it in as a circular shape. We can sort this diameter. So I can see it's going to like uh, 20 decimal places there. I would probably round that up. And we can have the connection type as well. So we can note all these parameters that we can then use in Revit. So we can have a loss method, flow configuration, flow direction, etc. So when I go to author these building components, it will come up and it will ask for the orientation and I can give it the model orientation or the model origin. Uh, we also have our parameters through here. The parameters that are blued out, you can't change in Revit. They're actually reading that information, reading that data from our inventor model. So this area, um, our density, mass, material, our accuracy, volume, etc. That all is um, computed, calculated, and come from the inventor model itself. And those come through, you can't adjust those in Revit. So that's where we author our building component through our BIM content. And remember that it is a good idea to simplify the connection before you do it, um, just for basically the weight of the element as well in your Revit model. If you uh, don't simplify it, you can have a lot of faces, etc., which will create a quite a large family file. So once we author these elements, we can also provide a UCS location. So if we do select the UCS location, that allows us to place a UCS origin point on our component. So I can export this now through export building components, and this will save this as an actual Revit family file. So Revit family file, that will be able to be used as a pure family file, and we'll bring all that across. Uh, we can export as an IFC, and we can also export as an ADSK file, which is an Autodesk Exchange file. Um, IFC, I don't recommend. I will show that how it comes through. It does come through as a mesh file and it has no real intelligence in it. So I'd be careful of, um, I, I recommend not using IFC. Um, IFC can be more useful. It is a sort of global one. You can use it in really any software. 
but it is quite dumbed down. And actually when it meshes it, it does become quite a heavy object as well. When we export that, we get this report come out in a HTML format. And this tells us basically where the source file was came from. So we can see here it's come from that IPT and we've pushed that out as an RFA file. We can see this translation type, Revit family file, see how it's sent from which system. So this actually came from Revit 2020. Um, how long it took to, to change. We've also got a bounding box in there. It has come through in inches. This was a um, Autodesk sample element. Uh, so that's been done in the Imperial format. Uh, we're also getting a number of faces here. So you can see that it's calculated those 16 faces. Uh, we've calculated two connectors, which were on either side of that pipe. So it's a standard family type. The orientation with, is with the model origin. We can see here our connectors as well. So we have two connectors, connector one and connector two, both pipe connectors, and they've both come through successfully. So they are on either side of our pipe. I'm now going to show you how we can use a, this is a computer. Again, this came from the Autodesk samples. We have a standard computer in here. We can see we've got a couple of fans, um, so some capacitors, etc., and a couple of um, pi uh, electrical connectors. So again, we'll put those two as electrical connectors. This is where we shrink wrap. So as I said before, you really need to think about the simplifying process and what you want to simplify. So we can remove holes, we can remove fillets, we can remove chamfers and pockets. So going through that, you can take away certain features which won't be critical. So you do need to consider how you're going to use that in Revit. Again, is a simple symbol enough sometimes a bounding box is enough and this really depends and goes through to your lod like what is your le level of development do you really need the data more than the geometry or just the geometry and not so much data so you really need to consider how you will work with that element so once we apply this shrink wrap it will then change this so i can see this as a dot iam file which is an assembly file once we shrink wrap it it will come through which it hasn't yet so at the moment we're just going to put on an electrical connector and again we're just pointing out this electrical connector here and how we can define that as a system type for the data uh, so that's not as in bim data that's uh, as in computer data So I've put an electrical connector here using data and I've also put a pipe connector as circular through here. So that's where you can define those diameters. Now when I author the building components, so this is like the next step you'll go to once you've first simplified and shrink wrapped your assembly and then applied your connectors. So this is your simplify icon here, then your connectors, and then you author the building components. This then gives you an opportunity to put in a family type name, etc. You can also put in your Omni class. So you can go in through there and you can put in a description, manufacturer, all these elements through here, which will then come through across into your Revit family. Now we're looking at a simple frame through here. So this is a frame that's come through. We can see the elements, we've got 89 SHSs. So this is just showing how we would work with a frame element from Inventor. We have our objects to export through here. So I'm going to export this as a DWG file. We're exporting the solids, the surfaces and the sketches. And we're going to save this as a DWG file. So we're not going to um, use the BIM content here. We're just going to bring this as a, as a 
uh, DWG file and we'll show how that works as well. So now we can go into Revit. We're going to use our 2020 just for this exercise. And we're bringing this in the, our Revit family file here. So when we bring that into Revit, this is what we get. We get our um, sort of classic items through here. So we've got our pipes, we've got our diameters, and we can see that we've got those connectors as well. We can see here that it's brought these connector elements through. So we have our flow direction, uh, flow factor, etc. So we can use this in our MEP systems. Uh, be aware that it's not really linked. You can see that there are no real parameter values. So this is our reference floor plan, but we haven't really got much parameter items through here. So we can see we're not really um, linking those pipes to the diameter. And again, it sort of becomes that you're much better to sort of offer those elements in the native software rather than to try and get confused and almost uh, change those in Revit itself. If we look here, this is bringing across the import. So we've got our IPT file. This has come across and we can see where we select it. We've got our pipe connectors. We can see how we do have the lines for the extent of the pipe, but they're not really parametric. If we look at that, we can come in here and change the diameter of these pipes. So again, we can change this in Revit, but we sort of lose that associativity between the two um, inventor model and the RFA file. They're sort of not linked as such and you're now um, creating this in like a Revit workflow where you can change the elements, but if you update it in inventor, it won't come across. You will have to make a new RFA file. Now we're bringing across a standard ADSK file. So as we saw, we can bring this as an ADSK file across. And this is giving us a bounding box. And again, this comes back to whether you want that particular level of detail. So we're getting that bounding box and we're getting the data out of that. And you're getting that basic size. So the, you could then change that size in in Revit or use this element in Revit to see that bounding box. And then you could push back to whoever's doing it in Venter and saying, oh yes, we've got an extra 20 mil or whatever to change that size. So you can stretch these boxes out. You do get the shape handles through here. So we can stretch that bounding box out as we require. You can see that it's also bought across our connectors. This example here is an IFC file. So we've brought this in as an IFC file. We have lost a lot of our parameters and we've also got a real basic mesh in here. So you can see that those edges aren't very clean and it's just brought those mesh surfaces across. So if you wanted to be real accurate uh, you can get the points, but see, it's it's not the best file format to use. So as a takeaway, I would be hesitant to use IFC. Uh, if we now bring across like a native DWG format, so we're just going to import this as a CAD format into our Revit model. So if we select the one we exported as a simple DWG, bringing this in, preserving all our colors, etc., and bringing that in origin to origin. We do get a warning that comes up saying that it contains some 3D data or points which we can't explode, etc. We do get quite a clean um, file come out of that as a DWG format. 
it's coming as a generic model. So it does have that through there. Uh, it can't be exploded as a DWG. So it does have that and it, you can see it doesn't really have much um, parameter data through there either. So our parameters are quite slim through here. With this one, our computer RFA, we brought this in as a Revit file. You can see that we've got the, the connectors coming in. So if I hover on that, you can see our connector at the end of that input there. And it hasn't really been simplified. We've got all these items which we can stretch out, etc. You can see that it hasn't brought a lot of those, it's brought some capacitors in that, but it hasn't really brought everything across. So that was because um, it's missing some items uh, because uh, we, when we simplified it, we removed those items out. This is now bringing in the SAT file. So you can see that the SAT file is quite a cleaner image. Uh, we've brought some elements across. Some of these we can't change. We can change the general extent of the outside. So this is the difference between a SAT import and a Revit import. If I just go back to that Revit family, you'll see here how we've got a lot more controls coming through here compared to our SAT file, which is this one. This one I've brought through now is a DWG. So this is coming as a generic model. So this is as a basic frame. So that's coming there in the, as a SAT file and that geometry is quite clean and quite usable. But again, we're not getting much of that data coming through. So that's where it's sort of important to just consider what your end object is, whether you really want the geometry or you need that data to come through. And most times that's where you will find that the data is more important and the geometry in all of them is the same. And it's just that data you've got to think about. So now we've brought in our frame, brought this in as a DWG. You will see here that we have no um, section properties at all. These were all drawn with 89 um, SHS members. It's, it's basically simplified those elements to uh, surfaces and solids. So we can change the size of these elements, but they have none, none of that data coming through that it's a uh, 89 SHS. If we look here, we can use this frame and we can use our analysis software. So this is in robot itself, um, sorry, in Inventor. We can do and we can get this static analysis of our members through here. We can also take that out to our Revit directly from here. So we can send this from our Inventor using this and push this, send this simulation to robot, our structural analysis software. And that will be a direct transfer. Now that we have that in robot, we can see here on the left, we're getting all those sizes coming through. We can an analyze all those surfaces, etc. And these are actually elements. They're not just surfaces. So we can see we're getting the section 89 by 5 SHS. Uh, we're getting our material as well and we're getting it as a beam. So it's not just coming through as a surface, we're getting our actual elements through there. I did have a quick q and I'll just, I'll leave that to the end. Thanks, Jeff. From robot, we can integrate directly with Revit. So if we use this icon here to get our integration with Revit, 
and we can get our direct integration and send that model directly to Revit. And when we bring in that into Revit, we are getting our exact representation. We're getting those coming across as elements. So that's by using the Revit, uh, sorry, the robot software. So by using robot, escaping it straight out to Revit, we're getting those elements coming straight out. So we're getting all our data and all these 89 by five SHSs, they are no longer just dumb shapes and surfaces. With this, I've created a simple box in Inventor. And here I can actually go to my BIM content tab and actually add parameters. So I've just used this as an example to show how you can then allocate model parameters. So I've got DO, D0, D1, D2, D3. And these are like my distance parameters. So I've, I can put equations in there or actually have them come across as direct measurements. And our model values will go through and I can export those with my BIM content. When I go to author my building components, I can then see that it's grabbed those parameters. When they're blued out like this, that means that I can't change those. So those parameters are actually setting the object and they're basically, they're almost like a read parameter. So it's reading those parameters that I've set in that item. Uh, we can't change them that that's it's sort of a read parameter rather than a parameter that we can then change. I can change these ones. These ones are blank. We can see here description manufacturer. I can go in and add items through there. And again, I've also got my component type omniclass number and name. We're using that. I can search through and give it an omniclass number. Again, with my pipe here, when I use that in Revit, I can see all these parameters have come through. So I've got my distances all through there. And you can also see my connector parameters as well. Same with when I bring the computer through, you can see these parameters coming through here. So now I'm going to go through a bit of a um, Revit to Inventor workflow. I will do this as a live demonstration. I do want to say that this AnyCAD, it's a new feature in 2021. So the ability, we've been able to share Inventor designs as you've seen before in that example, just how to bring it through as an RFA file, etc., and now, as BIM has grown over the years, it's led to a increase, particularly in prefabricated construction. So we're seeing more and more customers looking for the ability to open those Revit models directly in Inventor so that they can use Inventor workflows to then create those smaller components. Again, Revit, um, when you use Revit, it basically goes from one millimeter to I think it's got about a 10 mile radius of work where inventor you can go to like the point the fifth decimal place of one millimeter so you've got that more finer accuracy in inventor and that's why you would make a decision to do something in inventor or revit so as it's grown through the years in inventor 21 we're using anycad and i'll now go into live demonstration of that So what I'm going to do is I do have Revit 2021 open. So this is a new feature in 2021. And I also have my Inventor 2021 here as well. So this technology, I'm just going to open up our, this is the basic sample project and it's an architectural sample project and I will open that up. So any CAD technology allows you to reference these CAD files from other CAD systems, including Revit and other CAD systems into your inventor design. 
So unlike file translation, which we've just been through, AnyCAD does not convert the file. Instead, the link to the file remains live, and when the file is updated in Revit or the native CAD software, the file will also update inside Inventor. This means that you can work with teammates and colleagues who are using other CAD systems without having to actually translate the files. So it gives you that confidence that you can create references to the geometry and link that through any CAD, knowing that the linked file will update when you get a new version. So this functionality comes on revit.rvt files and allows us to link these files. The first thing I want to do is go to my 3D view. And what I'll do first of all is duplicate this view. So I always like to duplicate and it's good practice. So I'm just going to duplicate that. And I'm going to save this view or rename the view to our um, awning. I'll just have it in there as awning. And now what I'm going to do, now that I'm in this file, I'm just going to grab these walls here just to give me a bit of a rough boundary. And then I'm going to use my BX command. So B for Bob, X for X-ray is the hotkey. And that is our section box command. And this will isolate that out. So now that I've got that, I'm going to save this file. So I'm just going to save and re recalling that I've done it as a 3D view under awning. Now in Inventor, So I'm going to start a new assembly. So by opening a new assembly or by starting a new assembly, I can now place my object. So I can share my object through here so I can place my imported CAD file. So I'll go here and I will path it, make sure that I'm getting the right one and bring that in. When I bring that in, I get the opportunity to decide what type of import I want to bring in. So I'm going to bring this in as a reference model. So I want to have it in there so that I can use basically that awning boundary to then create my inventor element. Here I can select <coughs> what of that, uh, <coughs> of that project, which um, view I wanted to bring across, recalling that I did do the awning view. So if I select that and I will see a small preview here of that little awning area that I brought in. I know I didn't just bring in the awning, I brought in that building. Um, it's a good idea to keep this reasonably small so we can see that it's creating 187 elements. Um, I, have, I have tried personally and I have had other colleagues and that that have tried to bring across whole projects. It can take... Um, overnight, even if you have up to sort of 5,000 elements, um, it's not best practice. You are best to keep it small. And you just have to think again how you're using that in Revit. So we're just creating one small item around this awning. So I don't need the whole project. So only bring across what you need and OK. that will translate and obviously, um, as I said, I'm bringing across a reasonably small amount of elements so that will come across quite quickly. And then I can place that element. So now that I've put that in as a reference model, that allows this to be updated in Inventor should I need to update it. So Inventor understands this file format and it will offer a choice of those 3D views. So I've brought in that element there. And just to show this linked in through here, so I can now go back to Revit, and this isn't best practice, so probably don't try this. I'm just going to grab this wall through here and just show this as an example. If I move that, say, two metres into the house, which will obviously create a lot of errors with my walls. So I'll just unjoin them. But just for this example, you can see how I've made that area smaller. Now, if I save this file, 
Uh, I'll go back to Inventor first. So you can see up here this icon that's locally updating my project. You can see at the moment that isn't activated because there has been no change. As soon as I go back to Revit and I now save this file, Inventor will automatically pick up that change and we can see here this lightning bolt icon has become activated. So if I now select that, this wall will update. So you can see how it's that live link. So this function will keep all your information up to date during your project changes. You must have Revit and Inventor running on the same system. You'll notice that that flash was activated as soon as I save that Revit project file. So I can click that update bottom button and it will automatically bring that in. If I've received the Revit file by some other means, I just need to save it over the original version. So say if I've got a consultant and I received a new Revit model, I do need to replace that version of the original model and that will trigger the update. So we've seen how we can export native RFA files and also we've seen how we can now reference those 2D DWG files and model files through AnyCAD into Inventor. So I'll go back to a bit of a conclusion here. Um, please put any questions you've got in the chat, uh, just giving you a bit of warning that we're, I'll, I'll be reviewing that soon. Uh, so in conclusion, our lessons learnt. So moving data from Inventor to Revit is probably the most likely workflow that you will use. You can also go back the other way. So these assets, they should be considered as designed and approved. You, you want to have that sort of one-way workflow from Revit to Inventor. It, it's just not good practice to, to try and um, change those diameters of pipes, etc. You, you're better off to almost remake your family file from Inventor. So make sure that we use RFA, so as an export as an RFA Revit family file or an Autodesk export. You can use a SAT file or WG for your basic shapes, but you will not you will lose your param parameters. And always avoid IFCs. So make sure that you make a habit of avoiding IFCs, unless uh, unavoidable. We can also move our data from Revit to Inventor. So that will really help to give you those bounding boxes or whatever. So use Revit as your project authoring tool and then use Revit as off-print to author the inventor model. Uh, questions? So I will review the Q&A. I did just have that one from Jeff. If anyone wants to put their hand up or whatever, I will um, review that and unmute anyone if they've got a question. So feel free to use the, the Zoom function to raise your hand. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Um, we do, so the one from Jeff, uh, where are we at with Revit opening IAM files directly? So uh, yes, um, a video from Autodesk several years. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I can't speak to that. So obviously um, IA, IAM files, you can't work directly um, from Revit with an IAM file. You do need to use that export. Um, I sort of don't mind it as a workflow because that way you do get to control your parameters. You can add them in um, and you can get, as we've seen, we can get those um, parameters coming through quite well. Uh, I've got another, just wanted to know, so hopefully that answers your question that it's, it's unlikely, I would think, to, to be able to import IAM files directly in the near to medium term future, I just can't see it. And I think that they will stick with that being able to export as a family. And again, um, 
I don't, I don't know if I would want someone that's like basically a structural draftsman or a structural designer really working with my inventor products anyway, if you'd sort of know what I mean. Uh, wanted to know a bit more about the between inventor and advanced steel. Um, hang around for a potential future webinar. <laughs> so this one I won't be... Um, doing at this stage inventor in advanced steel um i have done it and it works quite well um uh, yeah not today sorry um damien <laughs> and we've got a question from mickey as well or oh, and can we create parameters in inventor and control them after exporting in revit uh yes and no so you can create um parameters but you it's sort of once you've you've almost broken that associativity so you can so what i do is i sort of bring that file format into and export that as an rfa and then i may change those diameters and all that in the revit file and use that as a basis to change the parameters change the size etc be aware though that you're sort of breaking it if you know what i mean so if then you go back and um change the diameters of those pipes and inventor you will need to almost re-export as a family and fix that up so uh, i hope hopefully that's clear enough so you can create the parameters but if you create them in inventor they're they're really locked to inventor um, they do become sort of new parameters so you'd have to put new parameters in revit to do it so i hope that answers your question in a roundabout way Uh, yep, so uh, Jason's just, just making that point as well where you can get the parameters, but you do need to set it all up in Inventor. So um, I, I would much prefer to do that in the native, like to always make those, um, author it in the native software and get that to that point where I sort of did say in the uh, workflow, like to try and actually finish that off, have it approved, and then bring it into Revit. And I think that was about it. So I will have a quick look again, see if anyone's got their hands raised, which you don't. So hopefully everyone has enjoyed the webinar. So um, I will throw back to Dexter to do a bit of a conclusion. Thank you, Ben. And thanks again for joining us on today's webinar, everyone. If you have any more questions, you can contact us by email at info at Bye for now.